Hey, thanks for watching. So, I'm going to discuss about the saponification reactions. Eh? Saponifikasi. Saya nak bincang pasal saponifikasi. In general, tu, umumnya, saponification adalah satu proses pembuatan sabun. Okay? It's a process of making soap. Okay? So, what are the ingredient ingredient that needed to in order to make the soap? Apa bahan-bahannya? Actually, you must remember we have three main ingredients. Please keep in mind, yeah? First of all, we need the palm oil. In general, we call the palm oil as a vegetable oil lah. Okay? Dia perlukan bahan vegetable oil and followed by NaOH. Why you are using NaOH? NaOH is function as a catalyst for the reaction to occur. Dia berfungsi sebagai mungkin untuk tindak balas itu berlaku. Yang ketiga, kamu perlukan NaCl. Itu adalah garam biasa, a table salt yeah, for the saponification reaction. Kenapa kita tambah NaCl into, I'd say into the uh, process adalah to decrease the solubility of the soap in the uh, in the solution maksudnya dengan tambahnya garam ke dalam mixture tadi tu dia akan kurangkan ketelarutan sabun dan sabun akan mula mendap iaitu perspite so how can uh, how sure are we the benda yang kita buat tu adalah soap so we can do the conformation test remember conformation test dia Quite straightforward untuk saponification process. Ambil benda yang tu kita filter, kita filter. Once kita dah filter, ambil the residue, the benda yang pepejal tu, kita letak dalam air dan kita stir. If there is a foam on terbentuk, iaitu buih terbentuk, maka sah. Benda yang kita buat tu adalah sabun. That is a conformation test. One more thing that you need to, guys, you need to know. They will always ask during the SPM, what is the difference between what is the difference between the soap and detergent? Actually, soap and detergent both are the cleaning agent, are the bahan untuk membersihkan kotoran. Di mana? What happen? Uh, kalau kita tengok soap ya, kalau kita ada soap ni, ada kelebihan, ada keburukan. Detergent have an advantage and disadvantage. Oh, both have a disadvantage and advantage. If you look, soap are more biodegradable. Maksudnya, dia kalau kita ambil air sabun tu, kalau kita letak ke dalam longkang dan sebagainya, dia tidak mencemarkan, dia tidak mencemarkan uh, alam sekitar. Maksudnya, tidak akan menyebabkan berlakunya eutrophication. You have learned bio, eh? Okay, dia tidak akan menyebabkan berlaku eutrophication. Yaitu aquatic animal die due to the lack of the uh, oxygen in the lab. Okay? Lake, eh? Uh, kekurangan oksigen. But, if you look, eh? Itu adalah kelebihan dia. Walau bagaimanapun, but there is a disadvantage with the soap. Soap will never ever effective in a hard water. Air liat. Apa maksud air liat? Air yang mengandungi ion Kalsium and magnesium. Kalau kamu ada air liat dan kamu guna um, soap untuk bersihkan baju, dia tak akan efektif. Maksudnya, baju kamu akan ada scum formation. Maksudnya, ada kekat. Air liat, maka dia bentuk kekat. So, baju tu tak bersih lah. End out. But nevertheless, if you using hard water, the most effective way to clean your clothes adalah by using detergent. Yes, advantage of detergent is it clean or it work effectively in a hard water. Hard water here adalah air liat yang mengandungi ion kalsium, ion magnesium. But nevertheless, please remember, uh, it is have a disadvantage. Dia akan menyebabkan eutrophication ataupun pencemaran kepada air due to the Present. Sebab apa tau? Soap ni daripada vegetable oil. Detergent ni daripada petroleum base. That's why it cause pollution especially to the river and so on. So stay tuned guys. I will going to do the next video soon. Bye.